Now, today I want to talk to you about a story in the scripture about a nobleman's son who was at the point of death. You know, the title of the sermon is, say with me, go your way, your son lives. You know, I like how Jesus approaches situations that are critical. You know, things that are critical. The human response sometimes can be panic and fear, right? Especially if it's to do with our children. I'm sure we all have faced situations with our children regarding health and high fever. I mean, once I measured fever for, I think it was Josh, 105.6. You don't want to see that number. And it's, it's panic mode, but then that's when you speak in tongues. I remember when you see such numbers, speak in tongues. Declare the healing power of God. The power of God will descend upon our children and they'll be healed. And you'll see that happen in minutes. I remember when we see such temperatures, Sam, you know, we were advised to put them in a bucket of cold water. Yes, because the fever cannot rise so much. But when we are actually doing that, we'll be praying in tongues. We'll be declaring the healing on their lives. And if these things have not happened, we thank God for that. We thank God for that. But even if it happens, I want you to stay strong. You know, God is, knows exactly what you're experiencing. And we have guaranteed healing. So just hang on to the word of God. You know, go your way, your son lives. And when I read this, you know, it really caught my attention. This is the noble man. It's from a royal family. You know, obviously, uh, Rome was ruling uh, Israel at that time. It's one of their colonies. But they had kings before. So this guy is from a royal family. Probably has everything. And then his son is dying. And I saw the distance between the two cities, it was like 25 miles, and uh, that research might be wrong because he covered the distance in a day, you know, and I'm sure he didn't have a Tesla during that time, okay? But it was miles apart, let's say. And this father left his son and he was going miles to meet Jesus. It is amazing. And the word of God says this was the second miracle Jesus did. That means, what was the first miracle? Water turned into wine. That's good. That means Jesus had not done any healings before this. He heard about water turning into wine. And he believed that if I can get to Jesus, my son will be living. He'll not die. You know, there is times when the healing will be gradual. And there is times when the healing will happen instantaneously. And we need to understand that. And here in John 4, we, Sister Rosalind read so beautifully, in verse 48, when he comes, in fact in 47, he comes to Jesus, and when he heard Jesus had come out of Judea into Galilee, he went to him and implored to come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. You know, he traveled all these miles, a one-day travel. I don't know, he probably had a donkey or something during that time. That was the way of transportation. And he was just imploring Jesus. He didn't go to a physician. You know, sometimes the first response is, let me go to a doctor. And that's not a bad response. And he was a nobleman. I'm sure he knew people who are doctors of that era, and they would actually visit homes, you know. He could have gone to the doctor's home and bring the doctor, and I'm sure that was probably closer 
than going miles, traveling one day to meet with Jesus. And when he implores Jesus to come down and heal his son, Jesus tells him, unless you people see signs and wonders, you will by no means believe. You know, it's interesting that Jesus responded like that. And he needed this miracle in his life. And that's why he was desperate and he just was imploring Jesus, please come, come down to my home and heal my son. I know you, you can do miracles. And I believe you can do miracles. But Jesus responds to him like that, unless you people see signs and wonders, you will by no means believe. And the nobleman again tells him, Sir, come down before my child dies. Come down before my child dies. It was definitely a critical situation. He took a step of faith saying, if I go to Jesus, then my child will live. If I go to Jesus and bring Jesus to my home, then Jesus can pray for him and then my child will live. He knew Jesus was there in Cana of Galilee when he turned the water into wine. So he was just thinking the same way. Jesus was there in the wedding, he was there at home, and he did the miracle. So I want Jesus to come to my home so that he can do this miracle for me and for my family. And then, let's see what Jesus says. Jesus said to him, go your way, your son. It's very interesting, I was thinking just one minute before Jesus saw into his heart and he told him that you are a person, you will not believe unless you see sign, a sign and a wonder. He saw his heart, his faith was not there. He knew that Jesus should come to his home and then his son will live. And that's why he tells Jesus, implores him twice to come down in verse 47 and again in verse 50 or verse 49, he says, come down before my child dies. But there was a shift in his faith within a minute as he heard the words of Jesus. That is how much power there is in the word of God. That is how much power is there when we hear the word of God. When we hear a rhema word of God being spoken to us, there is power in that word. And it can shift our faith. It can go from not believing at all until you see the sign and wonder from believing that even remotely Jesus can heal. When the word is given to us, we hold on to that word. That's why if you need healing and deliverance in your life, you go into the scriptures and look for the promises that God has already made and meditate on that word and let that word become your own. Your own. You know, otherwise it's still a Logos word which is there, but make it your Rhema word which is your own. You know, and God will give you that Rhema word. Even as you're reading, you might have a one-year plan and you're reading and you'll see that God will lead so beautifully Whatever plan you choose, based on your circumstances, God will speak to you and it will be relevant. It will be the right rhema word for you. His faith shifted immediately within minutes when he heard the words of Jesus. Sir, he said, come down before my child dies. And then Jesus says, immediately, go your way, your son. Go your way, your son lives. And he just held on to that word. And the word of God says, so the man believed the word that Jesus spoke to him. Think about it. Within a minute, his faith has shifted. That's what a rhema word can do for us. You know, our circumstance might be desperate, but God at that time will give you that word. And then you have great faith that you will overcome that situation. You know, that's how God works because the Logos is there, but he will speak the Rhema word to you and then you will go and see that breakthrough. And that's what happened to this nobleman 
you know, in verse 51, it says, and as he was now going down, his servants met him and told him, saying, your son lives. Even the servants use the same words. You know, that's how God works. You know, people will start saying the things that you have been believing for, and you'll see that breakthrough. In this case, such an important one. You know, when our children are not well, it's such a heartache, it's such a burden. You know, and we want them well immediately. And he was desperate. And even the servants come and say, your son lives. They could have used another phrase. But they used the same phrase that Jesus used. And then he inquired of them the hour when he got better. And they said, yesterday at the seventh hour, the fever had left him. You know, when the word of God is released from the mouth of the Lord, and it is given to you, you know, your breakthrough starts right then. You know, you don't have to wait because you might not have seen it. It took him another day for him to see that his son was being healed. But when you receive that rhema word in your situation, if it's health and deliverance or anything else, you know, we all face challenges, but ask God to speak on that. Because God wants us to just walk by faith and not by sight. And just believing and trusting and believing that we can overcome. Nothing will overpower us. We are more than conquerors through him. Nothing will overthrow us so much that we cannot overcome. We can. Whatever the situation, we should believe that we have this mighty God with us. That we are heirs of God. We just saw in Galatians. We are heirs of God. We are sons and daughters of God. The God who is the creator of the heavens and the earth. You know, if you see the resume for God, it's huge. And he is your father. You know, think about it. And we don't have to be concerned about any situation in our lives. You know, God will take care of it. And just believe it and declare it and receive it. And God will do it. Healing is a promise in the scripture. Even like that blind man who asked, are you willing, Jesus, to heal me? And Jesus said, I'm willing. He is willing. It is God's will for us to walk in divine health. It's God's will for us to walk in divine health and do his work. You know, it also depends why you want to walk in divine health. Even today we were talking, Praveen, Sam, and myself. We need to be in divine health to preach about healing. I said, you know, how do we do it? God is our healer and deliverer. And go to him. When we face such a challenge, God will make sure that we will receive that healing. It was the same time when the word was declared. You know, go into the word, get that rhema word, hang on to it. Yesterday at the seventh hour, the fever so the father knew that it was the same hour in which Jesus said to him, your son lives, and he himself believed, and his whole household. And this is where in verse 54 it says, this again is the second sign Jesus did when he had come out of Judea into Galilee. That means there were no other healings before this. It was the second sign Jesus did, and I am amazed by the shift in faith of this noble man because of the word of God. Because the word will build faith in us. That's why we need to, to yesterday I was talking to the kids in uh, kingdom, uh, not kingdom kids, in metamorphosis. We thank God for the kingdom kids as well. Thank you for teaching them. So I was teaching them about going from doubt to faith. You know, and how do we do that? It is, it is the word of God. Word of God will bring, give us the faith. Romans 10, 17 talks about the faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And keep hearing the word and our faith will grow. And I'm amazed by the faith of the father. You know, he went miles. I mean, think about it. As a father, when your children, when your child is not well, you might want to hang out with them. Right? You don't want to leave their side. Unless the solution to go somewhere else 
is a guarantee that they will be fine. Otherwise, you would like to be with them when they are facing that challenge and console them and comfort them and pray for them. But he was willing to leave the child and go. You know, he, he believed that Jesus can do the miracle and he wanted to see sign and wonder, sign, uh, sign and wonder. And of course, Jesus recognized that. But when the word of God was spoken, his faith grew. You know, I remember <clears throat> there was a sister like three hours away from here, Sam. And we got this call, phone call. They are, um, they are in ministry. And uh, this particular sister had a, a cancer in her mouth. And um, <clears throat> it was a big concern uh, for us. And they said, pray for us. And we prayed over the phone, but the Lord put on our heart to go and pray. I mean, this is a critical situation. So we, we took a day off and drove for three hours and spent a couple of hours with them and prayed for them. And from that day on, it was a gradual healing but we actually got a phone call just a couple of days back, and she said this on the phone call, saying, from the day you guys came, this was like a couple of years back, I have been experiencing healing, and I'm doing very well now. Let's give a hand to the Lord. You know, sometimes it will be gradual healing. And little did I know that I'll be using that testimony, you know. And I asked Christy to help me find more testimonies, and we'll share maybe a couple from there. And it is interesting. God reminds us. And, you know, when, uh, and I was thinking, what testimony should I share? And this phone call comes two days back. This is how God leads, you know. It's amazing. And then what funny story should I share? Reagan, the premier, you know, God makes it easier, you know, and even Moni said, rest for pastors on June 30th, yes, that's true, but I really enjoy what I'm doing, and, uh, you know, I don't mind uh, preparing in the, late in the night, because, because I'm kind of guy who will study only when needed, <laughs> you see what I'm saying, and I'm glad it is needed for me, I don't know about you, but I go deeper if I have to speak. And, and I think it's hopefully beneficial for all of us, including me, <laughs> you know. And I think it's human tendency as well, you know. Uh, you go deeper when you have to. Because I always believe, I learned from John Maxwell, you know, when you speak, if you're not adding value, don't do it. And John Maxwell is an amazing speaker on leadership and even today, when he has to speak, even if he has given that seminar or for hundreds of times, he'll get up at 5 o'clock and prepare. And I think that is the kind of commitment we need to have when we serve God because it's greater than just doing a leadership seminar. Anyway, this particular woman of God just called us a couple of days back. In fact, she had called Jemima, and we were in the car um, in San Francisco at that time and we were praying for the city of San Francisco uh, really, if you visit San Francisco, then pray. You see the deterioration of the city in the last, I've seen it uh, like three decades back, and now it's night and day. And I, But we are going to rescue it. We are going to pray and rescue it, and this city will be healed and saved, if you will. Proverbs 4 and 20 says, My son, attend to my words. Incline thine ear, thine ear unto my saying. I'm sure I picked up from KJV here, but that's okay. My son, attend to my words. Pay attention. Incline your ear to my sayings. You know, it's like listening carefully. You know, you're sitting in a presentation, you're sitting in church, you know, some will sit, they'll, they'll sit very carefully and they'll incline their ear. Some sit like this and are not listening. I'm just joking. Incline your ear to my sayings because it's important. Because what God is speaking can change our life. Even one word or one verse 
can shift our life. I remember in 1995, I was in the Miles Monroe meeting at Jubilee. I went there as a skeptic, by the way, because I was in a traditional church at that time, Jenny. And when I walked in, it was too loud for me. I said, this doesn't feel right. But my friend had told me, please go. He's a mighty man of God. So I was like, should I leave? But my friend has said, stay. So I went to the last row. Everybody was dancing. And I just sat down, Sam. <laughs> I said, is this a church? <laughs> But that sermon changed my life forever. You know, one afternoon with the Lord can change our mindset, can change our, and it happened to me. And I'm glad I stayed because he spoke on vision and purpose. And I was sitting there and writing notes, and I remember it was a shift in my thinking. I started thinking about vision and purpose and leadership and in fact, got a chance to meet Dr. Miles Monroe later on at a retreat and told him that I'm writing a book on leadership. This was like in early 2000s. And, uh, I have a picture with him. And it was, it was an amazing thing to uh, meet a mentor who was a remote mentor, a mentor that I didn't know personally. But definitely, one word can change our life. You know, For me, that word was vision and purpose, and, and beautifully articulated. And he has written many books, and read his books. He's, he's gone on to be with the Lord, but it was an accident that took him, and it, it is sad that he's no longer there, but a tremendous leadership trainer, a tremendous man of God, and he was connected to world leaders, and amazing, amazing man of God. I always looked up to him, and, uh, and still... Uh, he has inspired many around the world. I know that. Proverbs 4.21 says, Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thy heart. Keep the word of God. Let it not depart. Keep the Bible near you and read it as and when you can. Keep them in the midst of your heart. Meditate upon them. For their life to those who find them, and health to all their flesh. You know, the word of God is life because Jesus is the word, and he is life. He is living even right now. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, who is the everlasting Father. That's why the word of God gives us life, and life more abundantly, and he, uh, he will, even the word will remove, even as we read the word and understand the word and meditate on the word and make it our own, it will become health to our flesh. It will become health to our flesh because only the word has the ability to set us under the soul and the spirit. You know, it can go deep into our bones. It can be like fire in our bones, like Jeremiah says. It can go into the minute cells in our body and heal those cells. You know, I've seen some people pray, and I've, I've shared this before. Uh, we knew a doctor. She, gone, she has gone on to be with the Lord. Very older uh, lady. She was at Stanford, and I don't know which context I met her, but uh, I think I took Hannah once to meet her, and we were just having a conversation when Hannah was doing her internship at Stanford. And um, anyway, she was saying how she prays. She was saying, I pray at the cell level. You know, I understand exactly what is going on. Like Sister Rosalind, probably you can pray. You're the only one who, who probably understands in our church, you know, at a cell level what's happening. And she would pray like that, you know. And she had seen a lot of healing. She had a ministry like that. A healing ministry, very unique. See, the thing is, the amazing thing is, in the kingdom of God, you will see so many unique things. You know, I don't know if you have heard about this before, but God, that's how God does it. You know, He is not, uh, God enjoys the uh, differences in us. And He gives us purposes based on the giftings He has already put in you. 
So the purposes are already there. The giftings are already there. And uniquely, God will use each one. You know, the word of God becomes health to our flesh. The word of God delivers. You know, in John 8, 32, it says, and you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. You know, we need to check on ourselves. I mean, we need to be careful not to be in bondage of anything. And the word of God, the truth will set us free. So we need to actually be reading, meditating, understanding, make it our own and live a life of total freedom. And the shackles of the enemy are broken in Jesus' name. And when the word is in your heart, you will see that you, you are free. And you will see some who are not free, then share with them. You know, God is teaching us these things so that we can be ministering to others, your friends, and share with them about the freedom we can have in Christ. It's, it's amazing. It's sharper than a two-edged sword, piercing even the division of the soul and spirit, Hebrews 4 and 12. And the word of God heals. I like Psalm 107 and 20. That's one of my favorite healing scriptures I declare when I pray for people. And I like that there are three past tense words there. One is, he sent his word. Say with me. He sent his word, that is past tense, and healed them, healed them, say, healed them and delivered them. It's a done deal. It's a past tense. There are three past tenses and three past tense words in that scripture. He has already sent his word. He's not going to do anything now. It's already done. He has healed them and he has delivered them. The word has the power to heal you of any disease. Doesn't matter what it is. God can heal. You know, we need to believe. We need to believe. Some people don't believe. You know, I remember, I think it was Kenneth Hagin saying, there was a meeting, there were like, a lot of, God spoke to him. And again, we have to be led by the Lord. That's the key in the healing ministry. And God spoke to him to call people up front who have a problem with their legs in any way. I think 12 people came forward. Some of them had to be carried. And the Lord had clearly spoken, pray for them, I'm going to heal them. And so he prayed and some people were dancing and walking and amazing miracles happened. But there was this one person who actually came walking. Others were carried and they were already healed. One person came walking and said, brother, I don't think I'm going to receive my healing. It's been really bad. And he tells her, did you not see the others? <laughs> you know, faith is so important in healing. Faith is the most important thing in receiving the healing. And the rest of them received their healing. And sometimes it might take time. That's why we are talking about gradual healing. So don't beat yourself up if you have not received the healing instantaneously. You know, because even this sister who is this woman of God, you know, this is after two or three years. And of course, she, had to, she was okay. In the coming months after the prayer, she was okay. But now she is testifying that from, day, from that day on, things have improved. You know, sometimes it's gradual healing because even the, and God can do a miracle. He can instantaneously heal. We have seen so many examples in scripture, but, but he can choose to heal even a gradual, in a gradual process. Okay, Isaiah 55 and 11 says, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent. And when you are searching the scriptures for your situation, you know, God will send that word to you. That is the rhema word you hold on to. You know, what is the challenge that you are facing? Go into the scriptures and ask God to speak to you. And that rhema word, when he speaks, make it your own. 
make it your own put it in your heart believe it declare it decree it let no one discourage you from holding on to that word you know what is the dream that the lord has given you hold on to that because that's a rhema word you know i received first corinthians 2:9 i'll never forget that verse it's a rhema word and for for me for this for us for this church for the ministry it's first corinthians 2:9 and i i think when we see what things we have done we can relate i has not seen ear has not heard nor have entered the heart of man what god has in store for those who love him you know that i hold on to that word nobody can take that away from me because i have made it my own anna you know and what is your life words you know make it your own hang on to it god will fulfill it number 2 we talked about gradual healing let's talk about instant healing you know god is a god of miracles he can also do instant healing you know mark 1 29 through 31 now as soon as they had come out of the synagogue they entered the house of simon and andrew with james and john but simon's wife's mother lay sick with a fever and they told him about her at once this was jesus coming into uh, simon peter's home we have simon here uh, he came so he came and took her by the hand this is jesus and lifted her up lifted her up and immediately the fever left her and she served them i like the story it's an amazing story actually we have been to this place by the way in israel we went to this that synagogue is still there of course it is in shambles but you can see that it's a synagogue and then you walk down it's like 30 steps away there is this home peter's home and it was interesting to be in the same place in israel that's where this miracle happened they entered the house of simon and andrew james and john and his mother in law was not well was laying sick with a fever actually luke the doctor says i mean shares the same story in luke 4 38 and 39 and he says Simon's wife's mother was sick with a high fever. I think I, I believe uh, Luke because he was a doctor. You know, <laughs> he qualified it correctly. You know, Mark didn't catch it, but it's okay. It's okay. See, the thing is, the same story can be told in two different ways by two different people. You know, so it doesn't mean the word the word is not accurate. It just means. it was written by people of course led by the holy spirit but also god uses your own knowledge and luke was a doctor so he appropriately described it and mark just said lay sick with a fever and here interesting mark says and she served them after and here again luke says jesus rebuked the fever whereas mark doesn't mention that in mark he just says he came took her by the hand lifted her up and immediately the fever left her but luke captures that he rebuked the fever and it left her you know just two different perspectives but we learn two things one is we can rebuke the fever remember the fever and we did exactly that when we were facing the high fever for our children both hana and joshua used to get very high fevers and and but then we were able to overcome through prayer and of course at that time it's pretty scary right but we still pray our response should be prayer you know and it was inherent in our lives our response was always prayer and speaking in tongues and just the power of god descending in that situation you know god can also heal instantly and here jesus took her by the hand and lifted her up and in some cases it's deliverance the healing is also deliverance so that's why rebuking the fever in jesus name will help you know the thing is we cannot put a formula together you know that's wrong if somebody says hey do these things 
God will lead at that moment. You know, that's how it works. Healing and miracles, we cannot put a formula together, but God, whatever he has taught us, at that time he'll remind us, and we need to just do it. And here, one thing to understand is, when Jesus took her by the hand, he stood over her and rebuked the fever, but in Mark, it says he took her by the hand, what could she have done? She could have said, Jesus, I don't think I can do this. Right? That is where faith comes in. You know, because when Jesus gave her a hand, you can refuse it, right? You can say, I don't think I can do it. This fever is very high. Have you heard that? <laughs> this fever is very high. You know, so she was obedient to Jesus, shown by her receiving the hand of Jesus when he extended it to her. And then when she pulled her up, she rose. That means we must meet his strength and power with obedience. You know, we, have, we know Jesus is a mighty God. He's an all-powerful God. But that needs to be met by obedience. That's when you can receive that healing. And, by, and of course, faith is mixed with it because we won't obey otherwise. Otherwise, we would say, no, Jesus, this, is, this fever is too high. It's like the, the other lady, Kenneth Hagin, talked about that, well, I've been facing. And, and the rest of the people who were carried, they were already running, and she still couldn't believe her. So I think it is about our faith to receive that healing. And sometimes it's gradual healing, sometimes it's instantaneous healing. You know, the key is continue to believe. Eventually, there will be total healing. In Psalm 19, it says, verse 14, it will be done in a few minutes. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. You know what happens? When you are facing a health challenge, there can be negative thoughts that come to you. And I experienced that during COVID, by the way. And I then realized um, some of, one of the medications that was given, I was not supposed to take after 2 o'clock because I couldn't sleep because of that. And sometimes... Doctors don't give you the right uh, advice. But anyway, that's a long story short. The bottom line is what we need to be meditating on even as you are in the process of receiving the healing because the enemy comes to steal your faith, steal your joy and kill your faith and to destroy your faith. But our task is hold on to the word that you have received. Meditate the word of God. Do not focus on the negative, the thought that the enemy is giving. We take that thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ, if you will. What you meditate, what you think about, let it be acceptable in the Lord's sight because he is our strength and our redeemer. And I'll close with Philippians 4 and 8, one of my favorite verses. And there are many favorite verses in the scripture, like you all have. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of a good report, if there is any virtue, if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. You know, this is for, it's a life lesson. Do not meditate on things that are not praiseworthy, that are not of a good report. There are so many things to meditate on because we have a great God. There are so many testimonies that we have in our own lives. Just reflect on the past and we could have gone astray, but God rescued us. In so many occasions, you know, the enemy could have taken us out. So many accidents, even my, in my own life. You know, so many times God even spoke to me, stop the car, don't go, in a green signal. At least three times I remember and I would have been gone because I saw 
this, these cars going at such a high speed, Emma. You know, and then you thank God because God will speak to us in that, those times. And there's so many things to focus on and meditate on and to share with our children and share with our friends. You know, things that are noble, that are just, that are pure, that are lovely, that are of good report. If there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. We need to learn to do that because that's not normal. The human tendency is to think about what is not there, you know. But then we need to focus on the things that are true and noble and just and praiseworthy and a good report. And that's how we have to live our lives. And we need to say these thoughts are out of bounds in my life, you know. And I'm going to teach others about it. And we live our life like that because then we are surrounded by thoughts. The mind is the battlefield. And that's where you have to win first, you know. And it's so important to do that because then you, those negative thoughts are gone. We are marching on with what the Lord has for us. And, and meditate. Make sure you catch yourself. If you are going in the wrong direction, bring us back. You know, that's how we can live a life that is amazing, it can be an enjoyable journey, you know, and heaven on earth at home, the peace of God with us, it is possible to live like that. You know, some people will say it's not possible. They have not read the word. They have not lived that. That's why they are telling you, you know, do not listen to them. It is possible to live a life of great peace in a storm, you know, and it is possible even when there is a challenging situation that we can focus on things that are good and true and noble and just and things that are praiseworthy and God will enable us to overcome because we are thinking about just the word. We meditate on the word and what the word says and the blessings that he has promised us and how he has said we are heirs of God. You know, that one phrase should keep our thoughts focused on what God is speaking and what God has spoken to us. Let's all stand up. Thank you, Jesus. Let's do the decree and we'll pray. And, uh, and we, we understand uh, when there is a healing need, you know, it can be a challenging journey. I've been through that. I've been through that. You know, during COVID, God spoke to me, get an oxygen concentrator. It was so clear. I knew we have to buy it. And I know many of you helped in getting that. I remember one of our friends helped buy that. It was like 30, 40 miles away from here. But God clearly spoke to me, Simon. Get these two things. You will need it. Before I needed it, and I knew what not to do. I'll not share here. <laughs> but God is gracious. He knows what is needed and he'll speak to us. It was so clear. And people were surprised that we are ordering the concentrator at home, <laughs> Simon. You know, but the Lord was so clear in speaking to me. It was so clear as I'm speaking to you. And we made that decision, and within a few hours of it arriving, I actually needed it. You know, God is good. And God will speak to us what is needed. And I know these are not easy times to go through that. That's why I remember the intercessors praying for me. And I was just lying in the bed. But Moni, I'll hear the prayer of the saints. And they'll pray. I think they prayed for 21 days for me. I was blown away that there will be many intercessors, Praveen, who were praying for me. And I was so much comforted, Anna. You know, I was just having the phone next to me. I could hear the... Amazing blessings of God that were declared over me when I was not feeling well. But God is gracious and he released that healing. I thank God for that. And of course, Pastor Jemima was always there. It was amazing. She was not well, but she was taking care of me. I mean, that is, let's give a hand to Pastor Jemima. I appreciate it. When you are not well, you are taking care of your spouse. It's amazing. We need each other. That's the key. We need each other. And we need the promises of God. 
so that we can live a life as a testimony to many. Let's do the decree. I believe the promises in the word on healing. I receive my healing and the healing for my family and loved ones. My healing has been won on the cross. I have faith for healing. I confess my healing. I'll serve the Lord. America shall be healed as a nation. You know, one thing I forgot to mention, the Lord is reminding me. Peter's mother-in-law. You know, some want to be healed to play tennis. Which is not a bad idea. But Peter's mother-in-law wanted to be healed so that she can serve. You know, if we have the right heart, instantaneous healing was the blessing for her because her heart was, I want to serve and be available to my Savior. You know, that was the heart. And, and playing tennis also is okay. <laughs> I, I don't know, I cannot guarantee instantaneous healing by Jesus, but Jesus is gracious, so I don't want to say anything. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we are thankful. What an amazing God we serve. Thank you for the word of God. Thank you that the word of God is the sword of the spirit that can set asunder the soul and the spirit. Thank you for the promises in the scripture for healing and deliverance. Thank you for your gracious Lord. Thank you for the healing for this noble man's son and how you shifted his faith instantaneously because of the word that was given to him, that was spoken to him. Thank you for the instantaneous healing of Peter's mother-in-law. But she also had a part. She believed. She obeyed. Thank you, Lord. Master, I pray anyone in this room who is waiting for their healing or for their loved ones, Lord, I pray for instantaneous healing. Do we understand? Some might be gradual. But Lord, I pray for instantaneous healing. Because you are a miracle working God. Do this miracle for us. But Lord Jesus, thank you, Master. Every weakness in any body be cancelled in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that knowing that you are a God who increases the strength of the weak. You are a God for those who wait upon the Lord, they will renew their strength. Every weakness be removed in Jesus' name. Every kind of pain be removed in Jesus' name. Every kind of back pain be removed in Jesus' mighty name. Every kind of headache and migraines be cancelled in Jesus' name. Do it, Lord. We want to serve you. We want to live a life that is walking in divine health, Lord. But the reason for that is we want to serve you. Lord, we want to serve you with everything we have. We want to love you with all our heart, soul, mind and strength. We want to serve you with everything we have. We are all in, even as Jenny said. We are all in for the kingdom. Thank you, Master. Keep everyone in our church in divine health, Lord, so that we can serve you with all our might, with all diligence. Thank you, Master. Our loved ones and us, we will live in divine health. And we'll help others to understand the truth. Lord, I pray every family, every home will be a heaven on earth. Let your mighty presence be there in every home. Let great joy and peace be their portion. Lord, you are wonderful. You are a counselor. You are our Prince of Peace. So I declare peace and joy and favor of God and favor of man upon every family. 
Thank you, Master. Total healing, Lord. And let our families walk in divine health. It is possible. It is part of the covenant. Help us to live like that. We thank you and praise you. Bless everyone watching as well. There might be some of you watching who are not part of the kingdom. God can heal. God can heal even if you are not part of the kingdom. He's a gracious God. And I pray for everyone watching. If there is anything, any weakness in your body, it will be removed today in Jesus' name. But I want to challenge you to be part of the kingdom, to get the privileges of being the heirs of God. You might get the healing and go, but I want to say that there is a greater blessing in being part of the kingdom so that you can become sons and daughters of God and heirs of God. And the privileges of sons and daughters is much bigger than somebody outside. So I just want to challenge you and if the Lord is tugging your heart, then pray together and agree with this prayer. And you can be part of the kingdom of God. Let me pray and you can just agree with that prayer. Heavenly Father, I want to receive my healing today. But not only the healing, but I want to be a son of God and I want to be a daughter of God. And I want to be the heirs of God. So that I can receive the privileges of the kingdom. I receive the Lord Jesus Christ in my heart as my personal savior. If you agreed with that prayer, then you are a new creation. Be part of the Blessing Church here in San Jose. And if you are away from here, get in touch with us and we can connect you to a Bible believing church and a Bible preaching church, if you will. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.